Today, work, money. What are you anxious about? Everything. Oh my God, do I have anxiety? Worrying could be triggering your physical symptoms. There really is a brain-gut connection. The five anxiety warning signs you should never ignore. Today on Mel. And if there's one show you need to watch this season, it's this one. I've been a life coach helping people across this country for a decade. And the number one topic people reach out to me for help with is anxiety. Now, I love words of wisdom. And so this quote spoke to me. Anxiety always begins with a worry. So... What are you worried about right now? And how would you know if it was just a worry or the sign of something deeper? Well, today we're talking about the five warning signs that you may have anxiety and don't know it. If you feel symptoms of anxiety or everyday things make you feel anxious, I want you to listen up and take notes. Now, we went to social media and asked the question, what do you worry about and how does that show up as anxiety? Take a look at this. I worry about my rent, bills, money. I constantly worry about my family, work, my overbook schedule. I worry about my daughter and our future. I worry about my relationship, daughter, and bills. I worry about everything. Sometimes the fatigue is so intense, I won't even open up the mail. I let it stack up. At bedtime, my brain doesn't want to shut off. I start going down the rabbit hole and I can't seem to stop. Every time I get a bill for my student loans, my back and shoulders get so tense. It's like I hold all of my stress in my neck. One time I came home from a very stressful work trip and my entire bathroom was flooded. My stomach became a mess. I was literally keeled over in pain. I go to bed tired, I wake up tired. It's like I never went to sleep. One time I was standing in a long line at the grocery store and my heart started racing. And I got so nervous, I had to get out of the line immediately. I don't know if it was the sensation of being claustrophobic, but my heart was going a mile a minute. Well, joining me are Nidra, Rachel, and Nicole. And here are the five warning signs that your worries may be becoming anxiety. And the first sign is feeling tired. So Nidra, in the video that we just saw, you said that your worries are rent and money issues and that whenever you start to think and worry about these things, you feel tired. So could you describe for me, what is that like in your body? Tired in my body feels like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. And when I say a weight, I'm talking a literal weight. It camps out at the back of my neck between my shoulder blades and it feels like I can barely put one foot in front of the other. At times it feels like when I'm just climbing the steps going into my house, it feels like I'm climbing Mount Everest. Wow. Well, the second warning sign that you may have anxiety is digestive issues. And you know, in researching this show, I thought it was just like having an upset stomach, but you know what I came to realize? That there are members of my family that when they get anxious, they get constipated. I'm not gonna name names, but I know that, you know, this is something that runs in my family. And Rachel, I know that you're worried about family and about your crazy schedule. And so when you worry about those things, describe what happens in your body. <laughs> well, I actually have the opposite. I coined a term it's called E. BM, emergency bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very polite way to, to say what I think a lot of us have experienced before. Yes, do you like that? Yes. So, um, so yeah, I actually have the opposite problem, but I have a nervous stomach. So when I get stressed, I have like physical manifestations where I keel over in pain. It literally feels like my stomach is doing like massive crunches on its own. I wish there were actual like results, you know, from that. <laughs> but, um, but you know, a six pack would be great, just saying. So, but yeah, so I just, you know, I, 
it's like I either feel like I ate something terrible and I need to vomit, or like I said, the EBM, you know, like I have to go to the bathroom. Like right now? Yeah, like right now. So what, tra Otherwise, what triggers yeah. the EDM? Uh, I think that it's really like when I'm under a stressful situation that I have like no control over. I might, may or may not be type A, you know, kind of person. So a little bit. A little bit type A, yeah, gotcha. A little bit. Now so. the third warning sign that you may have anxiety is difficulty concentrating. And Nicole, I know that you're worried about your daughter and your career and your rent. Sounds like, you know, some of the things that I worry about when I think about my two daughters. Yes. And when you start to worry about those things, what happens in your body? What do you feel? I have this point where I'm just lagging all day. I am dragging. I can't concentrate. It would take me three hours to make a short meal. And then during those three hours after his past, I did nothing because I start a project and then I'm thinking about another project I should have done and that won't get, I, the concentration level is completely gone. I huh. can't focus on do, anything. Do other people around you notice a difference? Very much so. Really? I have a four year old and she looks at me and asks, are you okay, mom? Cause I look like I'm just zoning out. I've droned out to nowhere and just staring into space, but I'm trying to think, trying to concentrate on the task at hand and people can see it. It's in my face. Huh. You know, difficulty concentrating can also be a sign of a lot of other things, like for me personally, menopause or even just general stress. And so I want to introduce an expert in this field, board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Sue Varma, she's treated many people with anxiety in her practice. In fact, a recent study revealed over one million people visit the ER every year due to anxiety-related warning signs. She's here to help us make sense of these physical warning signs that we're talking about. So, Dr. Varma, Time Magazine reported this year that there's a 40% rise in anxiety in America and a million people going to the emergency room with these signs that turn out to be anxiety? What is going on? You know, so many people's anxiety manifests in physical symptoms for a variety of reasons. Number one, culturally, it's more acceptable because of stigma. A lot of times people are saying things are not going well in my life, but they don't know how to get the help. And then physically, some of these manifestations, they just take over. Mm. I mean, people are presenting to the emergency room with symptoms of heart attacks, palpitations, heart racing, sweating, pain radiating to the left shoulder and jaw, which are classic heart attack symptoms. Mm. And they feel like their world is out of control and they're dying. And I say to them, by the time they get to me is number one, you're not dying, you're still alive. And number two, we're gonna get you the right diagnosis because the right diagnosis leads to the right treatment. Now, a lot of what we're talking about in this show are not only the five physical signs that you may be dealing with some anxiety, but also the connection between worrying yes. and how that can trigger physical signs. Yes. So I talked about the fact that, you know, there's this connection between worry and how it triggers things in your body. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about it in your professional, you know, practice and how you, what your opinion is about this? Yes, and you know, it really is a chicken or the egg situation where we don't know what's happening. Sometimes for some people, worry is the predominant sign of anxiety. So think of anxiety as this umbrella where you've got the psychological component, the ruminating, the worrying, the what if, the catastrophizing, thinking about the worst case scenario. And for some people, that's the predominant situation. For other people, it's talking about the stomach. I wanna go to the bathroom. I don't wanna go to the bathroom. My heart's racing, I'm sweating. I feel shoulder tension, I feel pain, I feel tired. But sometimes the physical manifestations triggers the brain and says there's something wrong in your environment. What's wrong? And then you start to scan the environment and look for problems. Maybe that don't exist. Maybe they exist, but then your brain puts a spin on it. For some people it's physical, for some people it's psychological, and for some people it's both. Oh my, that was exactly what it was like for me. My anxiety was the worst when I was in law school. Wow. And I'd wake up and I'd have a stomach ache and I would literally feel the stomach ache and go, that's a sign. There's something really wrong. Yeah. But then I would go through my day looking mm -hmm. for what I could be anxious about. Yes. That's really, really interesting. When we come back, we're going to reveal the five key words that Dr. Varma hears every day in her practice that signals, hmm, someone might actually be suffering from anxiety. Stay with us. Up next. What happens in your body when you start to worry? My heart is racing. I feel like I'm in fight or flight. And so if you are watching this and you've got one of these signs, is that something to go and talk to somebody about? And later, 
She says it's her mom's way or the highway. She thinks she's right about everything. My kids don't even listen to me anymore. I'm Mel Robbins, and today we're talking about the five warning signs you may have anxiety and don't know it. And joining me are Tanika and Chelsea, and clinical psychiatrist Dr. Suvarma is here. We're focusing on how the worries in your mind can trigger physical symptoms in your body and how to know whether these symptoms may be a sign that you need help with anxiety. So the fourth warning sign that you may have anxiety is muscle aches. And Tanika, I know this is something that you can relate to and what you said in the video is that you're worried about money. Yeah. So when you start to worry about money, what do you feel physically? So those student loans, they're out of control. So when I am feeling back pain that it comes out of nowhere like I could get the bell see it and it's just like oh, my back starts to hurt my shoulders I feel it all in here my shoulders it feels like one of those stress balls you squeeze it and you let it go like that's what it, the muscle feels like ouch yeah and what have you done in the past to try to relieve that muscle ache when you start to feel it so I've gone to the chiropractor I've had massages the chiropractor has been the best um, treatment for me. I also find myself at my desk, rolling my back, stretching, doing, doing one shoulder of those? movements. Yeah. Sometimes it gets so bad that I have to lay on the floor flat and try to stretch. Wow, so Dr. Varma, I have to admit, even though I do this a lot at my desk, I learned something on this show. I'm muscle aches mm -hmm. and anxiety for yeah. real? Yes. You know, muscle, your muscles are the number one place that your body is storing stress and tension. And it makes sense from an evolutionary point of view, right? We want to shrink. If there was a bear chasing us in the forest, if we're not running, then we're definitely going to be hiding and we, we become smaller. And that's the sad part about anxiety for me is that people end up becoming mm. or feeling smaller as a result of their worries. So is the muscle ache a result of your posture? Yes contracting yes. and you don't realize it? And also when you think of tension headaches, which have to do with tightness in the neck muscles, right? Oh, something just <laughs> happened to you. What yeah. happened, Tanika? Yeah. The tension headaches, you, you mentioned like all, I feel it all in here every, almost every day. Yes, because you're clenching your jaw, you're tightening your neck, you're stiffening muscles up, and you're in this fixed, rigid position for a long time. Holy, I, that's why I love this show, because I always learn something every <laughs> single day, you know, doing this. I didn't realize that anxiety, you know, I knew stress could happen that way, but I didn't realize it could be a sign of anxiety. So Dr. Varma, when patients come to you, what are the keywords that they use that let you know, hmm, we may be dealing with a little anxiety here? Sure, yeah, so people will say anything from I feel worried, I feel overwhelmed, I'm nervous, I'm stressed, I'm scared. These are usually the most common words that sort of trigger in my mind, aha, I know what you're dealing with here. And so if you are watching this and you see those keywords and you're like, yep, 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 yep check, 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 and yes. you've got a one of these signs, is that something to go and talk to somebody about? Absolutely, you know, the, the thing that, that worries me is that when people, when people think that, you know, this is this is common, all of us, who doesn't have stress, right? All of the things that everyone right. is talking about, right? With bills and children, and we all have it, but is it interfering with your daily life? Is it affecting your ability to be your best self? Is it paralyzing you? Is it making you shrink instead of coming forward and doing something? And that's what worry does, is that it keeps us on a loop, this negative rumination loop. It doesn't allow us to move forward. Yeah, and you don't have to stay there. Yes. Chelsea also has been struggling with a little bit of anxiety. And you've got three big changes yeah. happening in your life, right? You've moved, you got a divorce, you started school. And so when you think about all the new things that are happening in your life, what happens in your body when you start to worry about? Right now, I feel it. My heart is racing. I feel like I'm in fight or flight. I feel like um, people could see my heart beat out of my chest and my pulse in my skin and my face. That's the fifth warning sign that you might be dealing with anxiety, this racing heart. And by the way, I don't see your heart pulsing. Does anyone see her heart <laughs> pulsing out of her chest? But that, is that normal to, to have that pounding yes. that she's talking about and the veins pulsing? Yes, and sweating and it gets severe. A person might feel dizzy. They might even feel nauseous. Mm -hmm. They may feel like they want to faint. They feel out of control. Well, the issue with doing a show like this is as you're watching at home, you're thinking, oh my God, 
do I have anxiety? <laughs> it's, you know, don't worry. When we come back, we have the foolproof science back solution that I use so my worry doesn't turn into anxiety. And Dr. Varma is here to give her advice to it. Coming up next. So tell me something that you're really worried about and that you think a lot about right now. What steps can somebody take that considers themselves a worrier or that may be exhibiting a sign but it's not too serious yet? Yeah. And later, she says her mom always has to be right and it's just so wrong. I raised her and I taught her how to do things the yeah. right way, the right way, her way. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, I read you this quote, anxiety always begins with a worry. And it's so true because if you weren't worried, you probably wouldn't be feeling anxious. Well, now that we know the five physical signs, what can you do in order to quiet your anxiety before it strikes? Five days ago, I put out a call on melrobinshow.com asking, what do you do when anxiety starts to strike? And so let's take a listen to what you had to say. Hi, Mel. My name's Marie, and my go-to fix for anxiety is when I sing in the shower. It really calms me down, and I feel like a superstar. Hi, Mel. I'm Rain, and when I'm feeling anxious, I like to go to my local flea market and dig through other people's junk. Hi, Mel. My name is Jackie, and my go-to fix for anxiety is hmm, curl up in my couch, watch my favorite TV show, and eat a bucket of fried chicken. Hey. <laughs> now, I love fried chicken, but I've never tried it for anxiety. The key for me has always been to attack it where it starts. And as you learned on this show, it all begins with a worry. And I'll explain how to do that in a minute. But first, I want to go to Dr. Varma. So what steps can somebody take that considers themselves a worrier or that may be exhibiting a sign but it's not too serious yet? Yeah. What steps would you recommend that they take? Sure. A garden variety worrier is just the worrier amongst us, right? So we, it's not full blown yet and it hasn't really impacted your life. I like to do a couple of things. To attack the physical aspect, um, one minute meditations that can be done anywhere at your desk, if you're parked in a car, um, do that frequently throughout the day. And that's just deep breathing, closing your eyes, finding a comfortable spot, breathing in, exhaling through the mouth, inhaling through the nose. I like a worry diary. This I'm really big on writing and journaling, and it takes five minutes. And the beauty of this worry journal is that you're writing all the things that you're worried about, but guess this, 85% of those things research shows never actually happen. And the 15% of the time that they do, we are actually better equipped to handle it than we give ourselves credit. So the worry diary, just dump it all on a piece of dump paper. Dump it all in and, gotcha. and do it. And you get desensitized by it over time because it's the same worry over and over and over again. And seven days later, well, you look interesting. at it and you'll realize that th these things never happen. And I tell people, go back and actually write the final outcome. And it's interesting because the thing that you thought was going to happen most often doesn't. So you start to realize you prove your worries wrong. Exactly. And what was the third thing? You said yes. meditation. You yes. said a worry diary. Yes. You said there was one more thing. And it's called progressive muscle relaxation. So it's like muscle group by muscle group. You tense and you relax. You tense and you relax. And it's teaching your body the difference between tension, which we're all always living in and relaxation. And you do it muscle group by muscle group and they're, they're on YouTube, 10 minutes um, and something very simple to do and that's actually proven to reduce people's anxiety. I love that, three steps. Here's another one and I wanna focus on you, Chelsea, and teach you how to do it because this is something that helped me uh, really quiet the anxiety that I had struggled with for 25 years. You're gonna use a process we talk about a lot on this show called Think This, Not That. Okay, we're gonna attack the worry. So tell me something that you're really worried about and that you think a lot about right now. Right now I'm heading back into the classroom. It's a new school year. And last year I had taken a mental health day from work. Okay. And when I went back to work the next day, a colleague called me and said, your kids were terrible. They were so disrespectful. They were so rude. And I said, I know, that's why I had taken the mental <laughs> health day. And I never went back. Never went back to work? I never went back to that job. So when you think about going to this next job, what are the thoughts that are starting to spin? <laughs> Just let's do a verbal stress diary. Use Dr. Varma's advice. Sure. So uh, another thing we say in that classroom is like it's being an abusive relationship. So I love it, but I'm afraid of the emotional and verbal abuse and potential physical that I could have in the classroom. So you're bracing for it. 
Definitely, that's an excellent word. Okay, so if you're worried about walking into a worst case scenario, mm -hmm. you're already gonna be on edge. Mm -hmm. And that is going to set you up to be triggered by just about anything. And so it's critical to not only do the three steps she's talking about, but to start to combat the, the pattern of worrying, even though you have evidence from last year. Mm -hmm. I want you to think of something, and I, something just came to mind. So when the, when the worry starts to pop up, oh my God, these kids are gonna be verbally, they might be physically, I might be in danger, I want you to say, no matter what happens, I can figure it out. No matter what happens, I'll survive. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could say, I'm gonna give you one more. The kids that are in my classroom are meant for me. Mm -hmm. So which one of those feels settling to you? <clears throat> the first one, no matter what happens. I'll okay, survive. let's practice. Okay. So when the worry happens, you're gonna use my five second rule to clobber the worry. Okay. So you're gonna count backwards, five, four, three, two, one. And then we're gonna say the new thing, okay? So this is almost like a combination of what you're talking about because you're verbally doing the stress diary and now you're writing a different mm -hmm. line. This is think this, not that. So I want you to think about, describe the worry for me. Uh, that I will be emotionally and mentally abused. Great, now use the five second rule. Five, four, three, two, one, count backwards and now say what you're gonna insert instead. No matter what happens, I will survive. Great, now how do you feel? That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> what just happened it's in your really, body? I, what you just did with your hand, it was like a whoosh, like a, oh, you know what? No matter what happens, I will survive. I believe it too. <laughs> we'll be right back. Coming up, is there help for the mom who always has to be right? I understand your daughter did give you a nickname. CL. CL, what is CL? Crazy lady. Crazy lady. Yeah. <laughs> so we got two piles. What would you do with the socks? Denise, you're apoplectic. She What's is about to here? jump out of her skin. Yes, I see people I'll in work. the audience <laughs> going like this. And later, can body language sabotage a relationship? And I could just feel her like rolling her eyes, like she looks like she's gonna blow up or something. Well, she looks like she's gonna blow up right now because she already crossed her arms and shifted her weight. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Mel Robbins. You know I love a quote, and I think this one's hilarious. I'm not arguing, I'm simply explaining why I'm right. Right, is that not so funny? Janice wrote in asking for help with her mom who is always explaining why she's right. Watch this. Hey Mel, it's me, Janice. I need your help. I am in a crisis. My mother thinks she's right about everything from the smallest things to the biggest things. My mom thinks her opinion is the only opinion that matters. How do I handle this? What do I do? I need your help, Mel. You know, I was watching you, Mom, as that tape was going, and I noticed you did something that I often do. You went and stuck your, like, <laughs> your like, chin out. What was happening as you saw that tape? I, I can't believe that yeah, she thinks, right. she, I can't believe that she thinks that I think I know everything. So you don't think that's, that's how you are? No. I okay, don't. well, let's find out. So describe your mom for me. I love my mom. Of course. Don't get me wrong. But it's just that she inserted her opinion and thinks she's right about everything. I mean, from my career to my two little babies to even parking my car is crazy. Really? Parking your car? Parking my car. Uh oh, I don't think your mom agrees, but I understand your daughter did give you a nickname. CL. That's crazy. CL? What is CL? Crazy lady. Crazy lady? Yeah. <laughs> That's true, they, they called me crazy lady. Me and my she, two sisters. She calls me crazy lady and that's a name that's not true. Because crazy they call lady. me crazy because of the fact that I, um, the things that I do and the way that I do my thing. My kids don't even listen to me anymore. They listen to my mom because they see how she comes in and implement things and they feel like, okay, well, Grand Grand has the last say so. Oh man, yeah. so paint me a picture though about some of the opinions that your mom, Denise, has. 
Oh, okay. You want to go into that? Oh, I want to go specifics. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's starting to be like, um, I have a bench outside of my house. Yeah. And with the bench, I have some pretty little pillows. Okay. Like, and my mom. Yeah, we have pictures of them from yeah. what I understand. Oh, there, there they are. There it is. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's my way. Okay, I love that's my how you like your pillows. Diamonds. Diamonds. Yes, and you like them as the diamonds. Yes, okay. That's me. I love yes, that. that's so cute. That's my mom. Wait, the so wait. Right way. No, uh, wait. Comfortable. So, so no. you change the pillows when you come over? Change it. <laughs> because we sit we sit on the we sit on her porch a lot. So uh -huh. Diamonds, it's not well, comfortable, and it doesn't even look right. But when you're not sitting there, you put them back diamond shape. It's pretty, it's decorative. And then she it's puts high. them back the other way. Yes, without me knowing. I'll, cause she'll go inside the house, and I'll get our, um, we'll go, both of us will go inside, I'll get snacks for us to sit and have mother time. Yeah. And then she'll, I'll, while I'm getting the snacks, she'll be outside on the porch. Fixing Taking the pillows. the pillows, my flowers everything and i'm like mom come in here and just give me some time she'll go in the kitchen redo everything i have to help her um, i feel as though as a, <laughs> as a parent help. as her mother i feel as though i need to help her and you know i raised her and i taught her how to do things she the has. right way so i do i would re rearrange the right or way. her way see she yeah. said it's so cute because you said i don't do that and yes. then you just said the right way the, the right, right. And, right. yes and right. i understand that pillow placement that yes. is extremely important i understand but you brought some evidence right yeah. Yeah. so let's see the evidence i think it's right over here all right so tell me what you brought. Okay, so when I go to my mother's house um, to drop my kids, I'm on the road a lot. So I bring my kids to my mom because that's the only person I trust and I don't want to hear her say anything. So I'm, I I'm pack I pack my kids um, dry fruits, dry vegetables, or sometimes I just, the probably the unhealthiest thing that I'll pack them is Cheez-Its. Okay. She calls no it No sweets in boring. The she says it's boring. No okay. sweets. Why no sweets? But because my son is a diabetic. Okay. And so I don't want, you know, and plus it's the new wave. You have to eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom, I come to pick him up after I get done with my job. And this is what I get. A whole bag of this. It's like a, whole a big bag. Every... No, no, let me show oh my you. Gosh. Every... Okay, it's a wait, big bag. In there. It's a big bag like this that she sent my kids home with. And full of this. You have your every gum, kid, every kid, sucker, something sweet to eat. You even and I know have it's at her home, so chocolate. I send it. No, Denise, what do you have to say about yourself? The whole candy yourself? tree is what she sent. She sent it was like a Halloween bag. Yeah. And are you it, concerned about the diabetes? I am, and we never had a problem. We she, never had a problem with his diabetes. We, I take his, <laughs> I take his she insulin. Like Look my, at you laughing about I take, this. We take his insulin level, his sugar she levels. She feel like my and, son know how to take how care of himself. How old is your son? He's five. Five? <laughs> five. So diabetes shot in the leg diabetes? Yes, type And he one, gives his own out. self sometimes his own shots. He checks his own sugar. He do, but... Is that why this bothers you? Yes. <laughs> and not even that. That's just say my daughter. She don't have... She's perfectly fine. But I don't want her to be a candy addict. Gotcha. She's, she's not a candy addict. Are you a candy addict? No, I raised I'm them. not. Because... I raised my treat my grandchildren the same way that I treat my, or raised my children. No, they're, she spoils them way worse. We well, I never. understand there's also something about she cleaning never products. Had. Yeah, because I raised them on Comet. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I go to their, her home, she should have Comet in the cabinet. <laughs> You know? Comic versus Ajax, they're the same product. She says, no, I'm finna show you the test. She does chemical tests with me, yeah. scientist tests. She'll put Comet and wipe it here, and then she'll do Ajax and wipe it here. Have me go in the other room, so I don't know which side. And which one be the cleanest? The Comet was the one. That... <laughs> that my mom and I fight over whether or not you should use a dish rag or a sponge, sponge. in the same. Dish rag. That's what my mother yeah. says, and I use a sponge. Whatever fits my budget is what I'm using. Oh my gosh, <laughs> all right, well when we come back,
There's one more thing Denise says she's always right about, and you won't believe what it is. Stay with us. Coming up, he's calling out his girlfriend on her body language. I could just feel her, like, rolling her eyes, or she just gets really tense, like she looks like she's going to blow up. So have you ever told her this, or did you wait to bring this stuff to the Mel Robbins show? Oh, no, I'm done. I am not. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing like a mother-daughter relationship. Yeah, of course you love your mom, but her constant need to be right about everything, like your haircut or the way you clean your house or the way you put your pillows or the raising the kids, it can drive just about anyone crazy and be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And that's why I love today's quote, I'm not arguing, I'm simply explaining why I'm right. Now, I'm back with Janice, who says her mom, Denise, thinks she's always right about everything. That's Janice, true. you true. say that your mom even has a right way to do laundry. You ready for this? Yes, I am. I, yes, go ahead. Let me hear it. Um, it's like she has, she says it's her four-pile laundry routine, but it's like six piles. All right, so what are the six piles? There's four piles. What are the four piles? Um... Garments, towels, red, white, blue, Well, here, let's do rainbow. an experiment. Let's, let's do it. Let's do an experiment. So these are your clothes. Whoa. Okay. okay, here we go. There we go. Now, I want Janice, you to separate, and you can use this as, as a place, too, to separate things. Okay. If this were a pile of laundry at your house... How I was how it? Yeah, how would you separate this pile of laundry? Okay, so I do one color, that, for the darks. Darks. Uh oh, I can see. Dark. I can see okay. Denise. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so we got two piles. What would you do with the socks? Where the socks, the socks go? Over here. Okay. What about these socks? Yep, right. over there. Oh, okay. No. Yep. Denise, you're apoplectic. She what's is about here? to jump out of her skin. Yes. What's happening, Denise? Okay. Um, what's ha What's happening? For one thing, this would go here because you know if anything red will bleed into the other uh, color and then she has this black and white this i mean blue and white so this has two colors so this is a multi-color so that's going to be separate i see people I in work. the audience <laughs> going like this, this okay you amazing. have whites yes. you have blacks you have colors and you have specials there's already more than four piles and if you have any towels or <laughs> or face cloth, they go in another. Because they're heavier. <sighs> well, uh, that's how, the, how I know this is my mother has these same Oh, OK. Yes. I'm like, yes. Mel, and you're your making mother me lose. Right. <laughs> so, she keeps using the word right. I'm not making you lose. I'm not, so why do you only do two piles? Because I work, and I'm always on the road. So as long as the clothes are clean. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And when your mom starts to tell you that you're doing it wrong, like, what happens for you? Um, I think I get, like, super, like, Mom, you say you taught me, so let me do it. It's going to be but done I, right. I do that to save her money, because if you do put the save blue and the white, it's going to bleed, the red going to bleed on there, she's going to have to buy new clothes. So. Well, that's, that's up money. to her. You know, you know, I think that the right way to do laundry is however the person that's doing it is Thank doing you, it, right? Mom. You know, that's what I think. <laughs> Here's the thing. I can tell you all this, but I want to teach you something that okay. you'll remember. You ready? Okay. Yes. Okay, so I want you to take this straw. Okay. And don't worry, for everybody worried about the C, these are paper, not plastic. Okay. okay? okay. I made sure to do that. And you're going to balance it. Now, how hard is it? I want you to now, you start sorting laundry. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... How hard is it? She wants to talk. She want to do it bad. See how hard it okay. is? Okay, try again. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Little white sock. <laughs> now tell her how you want her to do laundry with the straw there. Uh, she gonna make a way. <laughs> she gonna make a way. Yes, so well, the reason why I'm doing this okay. is because it's really hard to fight the impulse. And I want you to feel how fast you are to tell your daughter what to do. Oh, and yeah. I know you love her. Yes, I and do. And I know you have her best interests. The best. And I know it drives her crazy. So now you have an experience where you felt what it's like to try to be quiet. Yes. And now you have something you can say, yes. which is, Mom, remember the straw? 
<laughs> Mom, remember the straw? I love you, but remember the straw? <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> I've been coaching and motivating millions of people around the world, and what I've learned is that what you say may express some of what you mean, but it's actually your body language that communicates something louder. Do your partner or loved ones ever ask about your day, but then they listen to you while they're looking at their phone? Or how about they ask for a hug, but then they give you that, I hate that hug where somebody just taps you on the back, you know that one? Or they ask to go for a walk, but then they drag like three or four feet behind you. If you answered yes to any of these, your body language may be sabotaging your relationship. Now I'm here with body language expert Blanca Cobb and Fabian and Diana. Now Fabian wrote in saying that you've had enough of Diana's mixed signals. Oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> I can go into detail on all the things, but I'm just gonna go with the bare minimum. Okay, let's I mean, go. She just washes dishes, leaves them full of soap and water, and like <sighs> nothing. I go and I try to like do a load of laundry, and she does, and I already see that it's already washed, and she doesn't put it in the dryer. It's like she's the halfway person. And I try very carefully to like confront her, but then I could just feel her like rolling her eyes or she just gets really tense. Like she looks like she's gonna blow up or something. Well, she looks like she's gonna blow up right now because she already crossed her arms and shifted her weight. But are well, you guilty of being like the halfway person? I mean, I guess I might have occasional side eye or eye roll here and there. And you know, I, I guess I admit I sometimes do the dishes where I just soak, leave them to soak, or I leave the laundry in the dryer. I don't like to put it away. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. So that's, you know, hence the stink face or the side eye. So have you ever told her this, or did you wait to bring this stuff to the Mel Robbins show? No, no, show? I'm, no I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> like, I was gonna take this to my grave. What? But, uh, yeah, but I'm just so thankful that you invited me, so now I can actually I'm have like, the so answer. that's why we came to New York. No, you yeah. Didn't, yeah, she didn't think we were doing something romantic or anything. Well, you guys are dressed to the nines, so clearly you should take her to do something romantic <laughs> after this. But so let's, put, let's uh, fix this right now, and I have asked for the help of Blanca Cobb, and I have an exercise, okay? <laughs> And Blanca is a body language right. expert, and it's been very interesting to watch you guys. I cannot wait to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to this couple. They're adorable, they but are they're adorable. arguing. How much of what we communicate is verbal versus body language? Up to 70% of communication is nonverbal, depending on the research study. So that means that words are important, they have an impact, but it's like that old saying, it isn't what you say, it's how you say it. So your body language can either support what you're saying or it can betray you. Well, so Diana, I want you to take a look at this photo and can you set the scene for us and describe what's happening here? Oh my God, look how cute you two are. Uh, well, we're about to go to the dog park, so we're very happy to see our puppers go and socialize with their dogs and play and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, and you're even smiling as you're talking about it as you see the two of you. <laughs> Blanca, what do you see in this photo of these two? There are two big things that I see. One is that Diana is leaning back on Fabian. And when you're going to lean back on somebody, you have a lot of trust in that person to hold you up to support your weight. Fabian is leaning forward. So he's leaning forward to support her weight. So what he's saying figuratively and literally is like, honey, I got your back. She also has this big smile on her face, so she's feeling happy in that moment. And if you have somebody, if you have a partner who has your back, you have every reason to smile. And exactly. totally. And so what would you say mm -hmm. about the body language that you are witnessing here today? There is a disconnect in the body language. Uh, what you pointed out earlier, crossing the arm, shifting the weight, doing a little eye roll, putting more attention onto me than onto her partner, Fabian. I can totally see it. But then if you look at her arm, I'm gonna point out something subtle. You have the arm, it's almost like a physical and psychological barrier in between you two. And her legs are also pointing my way. So it's very different if you're opening up to your partner. If I do this or turn, I'm sure you feel a little neglected. But if I turn to you, I'm facing you and my shoulders are towards you and then my leg is 
piece facing toward you too, it sends a very big difference. Diana, what are you thinking as you hear this? That makes a lot of sense. You're engaging with the person that your body is pointed to towards exactly. more so. You know, the next time that you catch yourself kind of doing, I guess it would be this to Fabian, <laughs> right? Um, I want you to be soft mm -hmm. with your partner, okay? And it stands for smile, open posture, leaning into them or back into them and touching them. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Why don't the two of you stand up? Let's give it a try. Look at you, are you two professional dancers or something? <laughs> okay, look at each other. Smile at each other, open posture like you love each other, touch. Oh man, okay, it's getting steamy at the moment. <laughs> Look at how quickly that changed. Great job, thank you. Thank Blanca you. Cobb, thank, thank you, you too. Bella. All right, so we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, God, Welcome back. I've spent the past decade coaching and motivating millions of you to take control of your life, and Elizabeth is an inspirational example of that. Elizabeth was right here during my Mindset Reset show, looking for the tools to change her thoughts of a negative body image to a positive one. Remember this? When you look in the mirror, what's the disgusting thing that you say to yourself? I, I don't want people to ever see how I look while I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Oh, I call that a junk thought when you trash yourself. And that trash talk, it didn't last long. Elizabeth has taken the first steps to regaining control of her health by changing the way she talks to herself. And she wanted to share it with you. Check this out. Hey Mel, it's Elizabeth. Thank you so much for all the advice that you gave me on the Mindset Reset Show. When I was on your stage, I was just really feeling unhappy, insecure, and just really disliking my body. But once we spoke, I knew I had to make a change. So, I am back in the gym, and I have been going ever since. And every day, I make sure I 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, get up and go, and it's all because of you. So, thank you. Thank you, but you get the credit, Elizabeth, because you're doing the work, so keep telling yourself you deserve to feel good. And finally, in case nobody has told you today, let me be the one to tell you that I believe in you and your ability to change your life for the better. And as you learned on today's show, always be aware of the five big anxiety signs and be soft with the people you love. That's why I'm here cheering for you five days a week and reminding you that whatever you're facing, you got this. I'll see you next time. <laughs>